Hello, I'm Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guides to Adobe Premiere Elements and Adobe Photoshop Elements and Premiere Elements together. And here we are in part two of our eight-part series on basic training with Adobe Premiere Elements 15. The vast majority of the time that you're going to be editing video, your video is going to be coming from some sort of recording device. Sometimes that device is a camcorder. Sometimes that device is a, a GoPro camera or a still camera that shoots video and sometimes that device is your smartphone. In any event, Premiere Elements has built into it tools for getting the video off these devices and loading them into your project. And I encourage you to use this tool, the Video Importer tool, to get any video off any recording device rather than manually using Windows Explorer or Mac Finder to move the files because the Video Importer and Premiere Elements is designed to do this for you and make sure you get the right files. Sometimes you grab the wrong files, sometimes you grab incomplete files if you're doing it manually. This way the program will do the work for you. Now I have my camcorder attached to my computer via USB. I have the camcorder, which is a Canon camcorder, shoots AVC HD. I have that set to VTR. I also had to do a couple of things on the camcorder to turn it on so that it's interfacing with my computer. Once you've done that, you should get some sort of indicator. If you're on a Mac, sometimes you'll see the camcorder show up as an additional device on your desktop. If you're on a PC, you'll probably hear a little bing bong of Windows recognizing the device. But in any event, once your device is connected, it's easy cheesy. To add media from your camcorder, simply go up here to the Add Media button and select the option to add videos from cameras and devices. This works, again, whether you're using a camcorder, a GoPro, a still camera, or even a smartphone. Select the option to get videos from a device. Now this is the video importer that opens up and look how nice this interface is. This is showing me little thumbnails of all of the video that's on that camcorder. And I can select which pieces I want to grab and which pieces I don't want to grab off this camcorder. I can even preview them before I select. So for instance, if I select this first clip here, and then go down here to the lower right corner of the screen. I can play it. And I can decide whether or not that's a keeper. Now you notice they have little check marks next to them. That tells me those are selected. In other words, every video clip at this point would be drawn off the camcorder and copied to my hard drive. Now this is a very important principle, by the way. Any video you're editing in your project must be on your computer's hard drive. If you link to a media file that's on your camcorder or to an external drive and then you unplug the camcorder from your computer or unplug the external drive, you're gonna lose the connection. You must have that connection to your media file throughout the entire time you're editing your project. One of the nice things about the video importer, it's not only going to get the media into my project, it's actually going to copy it off the camcorder and put it on my hard drive, exactly what I want it to do. You'll notice that in addition to being able to choose which media clips the video importer actually takes from the camcorder, I can also select some other options over here. Now by default, it's set to add to the timeline, in which case it's going to get the media off the camcorder and add it directly to my timeline. I don't like that option, I'm gonna uncheck that, but I do like the option to delete the files once they're copied from my camcorder. There's no point in having them just take up space on my camcorder. You also have the option to create an instant movie, which is sort of an automatically generated movie. I don't like to do that, but it's there if you want it. Up here, you can select where the videos are saved to. There's the default position, but you can browse and put them any place at all on your hard drive that you'd like. You'll notice that this option to name the files is grayed out unless you change the preset up here above it. And right now it's set to file name. I like to set it to a custom file name. If you don't set it to a custom file name, you're going to get the files coming in with the default name that your camcorder gave them. In other words, 000.mts, 001.mts, et cetera, et cetera. But if you set it to custom name, we can call this, for instance, neighborhood. And now, when I copy these files over, they're gonna be named neighborhood one, neighborhood two, neighborhood three, neighborhood four. And that makes them easier for me to identify. Okay, so I've selected the clips that I want to bring over. I've selected the option also for them to be deleted from my camcorder once they come over. And now all I need to do is press the Get Media button down here. Click on that. And then the files come in. 
So these have been simultaneously copied to my hard drive and added to my project. Now, if I were working in Quick View, there is no project assets panel, so whatever you add is automatically added directly to your timeline. In Expert View, which is the more professional of the workspaces, the video or the media files are first added here to the project assets panel and then simply drag down here to the timeline as you need them. Now, I hope you join me for part three where we're going to actually do some basic editing with this program. And of course, if you want to know everything there is to know about this program, be sure to check out those moviepicks.com guides that are available on Amazon.com, the guide to Adobe Premiere Elements 15 and the guide to Adobe Photoshop Elements and Premiere Elements together. I'm Steve Grisetti. Hope to see you again real soon.